All right, Alderman Farms, the pair of you. How about your first foray out of the domestic world? What was uh, that all about? Well, I, I don't know if you saw um, going around Facebook the last few days. Uh, I, I don't think it's a YouTube video, but there's, um, oh, what was the name of it? One Girl's Rant yeah. or something like that. And it's a funny little parody thing where this girl is uh, talking about the hazards of backyard chickens. And uh, she described them as a gateway livestock, you know. That, and, and that was so us because we started with chickens. Um, mm -hmm. We weren't living here at Alderman Farms. We were in Louisiana just outside of a subdivision. So we had, what did we have? Two, Twelve. We two, had two, two and a half acres. Two and a half acres. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started with 12 buffs, right? Mm -hmm. Twelve buff Orpingtons, built a nice coop. And, uh, and so that we started for the egg production. And uh, we enjoyed that so much. Uh, and, and that was back during the time when milk prices were really starting to spike uh, mm -hmm. for the first time that we noticed. And we thought, this is stupid. If we're going to pay this much money for milk, um, we should be getting what we pay for. In other words, we understood that getting milk goats was not going to necessarily lower the cost of milk for us. But dollar for dollar, we would be getting a, a much better product in our milk um, because we're, we're of the opinion that milk you buy in the store is basically worthless you know the uh, yeah uh, it's just sort of milk flavored water if you will and uh, so we went you know chickens first I don't remember how long we had chickens before we mm -hmm. took the plunge in goats um, not long uh, Jared tell me when I talk too long but I, I gotta tell you the the story about how we got into goats we we decided together that we would uh, that we were going to do the dairy goat thing, so we said, okay, let's find one. Or no, no, no. I said, I said, I've got to taste the milk first. <laughs> and everybody, if you get nothing else from this show tonight, write this down. Don't go to the grocery store and get goat milk mm -hmm. to find out what goat milk <laughs> tastes like. Uh, we did that, and it was the most foul liquid I've ever put in my mouth. I literally couldn't swallow it. I had to spit it out. I'll tell you why in a minute. I learned later what I was tasting. So that was the end of that. Well, some period of time later, months, I think, mm -hmm. uh, a friend of Patty, Patty was at a friend's house who was also homeschoolers like we, like we are for something totally unrelated, and, and they had goats, and she related that story to her friend, and, the, and she was like, oh, girl, no, come with me. And she gave her some of her fresh milk, and Patty called me and said, look, that's not what it tastes like. And I said, okay, I trust you. Let's try again. And long story short, we found a goat and went out there, and it was kind of funny. The little man um, brought me it. We were looking at the goat about to make the deal, and I told him, I said, sir, I've got to taste this goat milk before I buy it. And he, and he said, okay, fine. And he went inside, got a, a wash rag and a glass, came out and cleaned the rudder real good and squirted some off and then squirted about half a glass full. And he reached the, he reached the glass out to me and uh, – and he pulled it back, and he said, i got to warn you. And I thought, oh, no, you know, here we go. And he said, it's going to make you want to throw rocks at cows. <laughs> and, and he gave it to me, and it was just this – it was like nectar. It was the sweetest okay. – the sweet, it was very, very good, and we, we've been hooked ever since. And of course, since that time, we've added you know, Jersey George Cow. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I was just to say, since that time, yeah. we've added – because uh, – and I'm sure we can talk – I don't know how specific you're going to want to get later, Jerry, but with goats, you don't get a lot of cream, and we can explain why that is, and I hope you'll remind me to explain why that goat milk tastes bad in the store. But we did get, we added a jersey. We've got two. We've got a jersey uh, heifer and a jersey, a young jersey that just left here today yeah, to go to my cousin's her. house um, to get bread. So, Yeah, and my favorite now is jersey cow milk, so I, uh, I do like that better than goat milk. Hey, but, but I'm going to claim the remainder of my time to go back and, and tell you about why that goat milk tastes bad in the grocery store. Uh, this is actually very important information for anybody who's considering adding goats to their <clears> homestead. <throat> you need to know that there's a handful of dairy goat breeds. We're, I'm talking about dairy goats. If you want meat goats, there's boar and maybe one or two others and a couple of crosses. But as far as dairy goats are concerned, there's Nubian, Toggenberg, Oberhosley, Sonnen, La Mancha, Alpine, Alpine, 
a Nigerian dwarf classifies as a dairy goat breed. Here's a general rule of thumb. A general rule of thumb is that dairy goats, the flavor of their milk is susceptible to environmental influences. Um, and almost all of those breeds, that actually includes odors in the air. If there are strong odors in the air where they live, it may flavor their milk. That's what happened with that. Once we had goats on our property, and I knew what a male goat, what a buck smelled like, I knew what I had tasted in that milk in that grocery store. The buck smell. It's the you know, milk tasted like a buck smells. But here, here's the final thing. Nubians, for some reason, Nubian dairy goats are not as susceptible as the other breeds to environmental influences. They will not, the flavor of their milk will not be affected by odors in the air. So we went with Nubians. Well, you know, you say that, and, and now I wonder, we've got um, a mutt of a goat. I don't even know what she's uh, got all mixed in her, and maybe she's got more Nubian than, and I'll, I'm going to show my air, and my ignorance here, but the Nubians have the floppy ears. Is that easy way to say the Nubian? So I, yes, I don't they're, think... they're known. they're known for the long, long floppy ears and, and what's described as a Roman nose. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's called Roman, but... But it's a, I think a, a, a long nose. I think ours is actually a, an alpine mix. Um, but I say that to mention that there's been two times in the two years that we've been milking her that I've ever noticed her milk change flavor, and I have always thought that it tasted like a uh, a grass. It tasted like a you know like I had just grabbed a weed and shoved it in my mouth. Like she had got a hold of something. That transferred over into into her milk. Yet, I have a um, uh, Kiko. I think is the is the breed that he is stud that is only 15 feet from her. And if you get up on him, if you were to pet him with your hands, you would be washing your hands for the next 20 minutes trying to get the smell off your hands. But he does not affect her milk. So. I mean, I hear where you're coming from, but I think at the same time, like you say, it's a general rule of thumb. It's not going to apply to every goat out there. No, that, that's right. right. It's, it's a general rule of it's a it, it's a general rule of thumb. I've seen your goat. I, I think your goat has some Nubian in it. I don't know how much. I don't know if that's the reason why hers is not flavored. But again, it's just a general rule. It doesn't mean that every goat's going to be that way. 